Okay, so I think it's fair to say that upgrading your gaming PC at the moment is a royal pain in the backside. Everything's out of stock, and even if you can find a new graphics card or processor, it's gonna probably cost you two or three times the price from a dodgy reseller. So if new hardware is off the table, how are we gonna boost your frame rate, your performance, and your load times in games? Well, I've put together some of my favorite tips, most of which won't cost you a penny. So hopefully a few of these tips will be helpful. And if you do enjoy it, then a sub and a thumbs up would be amazing. But let's get straight into it. And tip number one, well, let's talk about monitors. If you're still running a 60 hertz monitor, this might actually be holding you back because if you're getting over 60 FPS in your games, upgrading to a 120 or 144 hertz display will essentially unlock that extra performance so you get a smoother game without having to buy a new graphics card. Of course, it does depend on the game you're playing and also the specs of your PC because if you're only getting 40 or 50 FPS in Call of Duty, then buying a 120 hertz monitor won't do anything, although regardless of the performance you get in games, having a high refresh monitor will always make a difference to your desktop experience. So navigating windows and browsing the web, all that stuff will be a lot smoother uh, as well. And also newer gaming monitors are likely to have faster response times and extras like G-Sync, which help reduce tearing and smooth out your frame rate. So would you benefit? Well, it's a pretty easy test. Just boot up a game with an FPS counter enabled in the GeForce experience or your Radeon software. And you can then see how much beyond 60 frames per second your system actually gets. And so just how much smoother gameplay you could unlock. So conveniently, my first tip does actually involve buying something, but the rest of them, most of them don't cost you anything at all, including this next one, which involves tweaking your graphics card just a little bit. Okay, so first up, make sure you've got the latest graphics drivers installed. I mean, this can help as well. Right click on the desktop and open the control panel. Go to manage 3D settings, scroll to power management mode and change this to high performance. This will use a little bit more power, but it should mean your graphics card will go to boost clocks more often. And also while you're here, go down to texture filtering quality and also switch this to high performance. Okay, tip number three, and we've all done this where you fire up your game and your performance sucks for some reason. So you go into the graphic settings, you start messing around and something fixes it, but you're not quite sure what. And it's where one or maybe two graphics options in any game seems to completely tank the performance. And often it's not clear which settings are the worst offenders. So rather than say setting everything to high overall, check if any individual settings come with a warning that they're demanding and also, if you see a resolution scaling option, this will actually allow you to reduce the res of in-game assets, but keeps the UI elements at your main resolution so they still look sharp. And actually, these scaling options are often a better alternative to simply dropping the resolution. Although, to keep things nice and simple, AMD and NVIDIA, with their GeForce experience, have optimized settings options that detect, based on your system, what graphics options to use, and this can be a good starting point. Okay, tip number four, and it's all about this, airflow. This is a big one. Having good airflow keeps your CPU and your GPU temperatures down, which means they can run at higher clock speeds for longer before they throttle. And it should also mean that your fans don't have to run as fast, so they're quieter, and also maybe gives you more headroom for overclocking. And since your graphics card speed steps down at certain temperatures, even if you can get your system to drop a couple of degrees, it might help keep it from throttling as much. So get your vacuum or a can of pressurized air and some cloths and clean out any filters, fans and air inlets. Although just make sure your PC is switched off of the wall or PSU first. But going back to this, which is a Corsair mesh front plate, uh, this is also another really good way of improving airflow. There's nothing worse than having a nice fancy gaming PC with a big chunk of metal or plastic on the front, which restricts the intake. So even if it looks fancy, most of the time you're gonna be much better off with a mesh front plate and even a top plate uh, for your system to get that airflow through and then out the back of your system and away from your hot components. Also, if you are regular on the channel, you may notice that this is actually a different PC. I'm building two brand new uh, rigs, one Intel, one AMD. This has got the 11th gen uh, Rocket Lake i9 processor inside, so I'm working on some videos for that. But personally, I'd start with a good spring clean before spending any money. Now, this is just a quick tip, and you probably already have one, but if you don't, go outside now, turn this video, actually no, watch the end of the video, then turn it off, and buy yourself an SSD. 
Seriously, it's the single most effective upgrade you can make, and it can bring an old system back to life. And it can even have some effect on frame rates and even texture pop in. But really, it's the load times where you'll see the biggest benefit. And even a cheap SATA SSD will make a big difference over a traditional hard drive. But if you can splash the cache, then a fast NVMe M2 SSD will be even faster and more future proof. I've completely lost track of what number tip we're on, but all I'm going to say to you is DLSS, Deep Learning Super Sampling. This is NVIDIA's clever AI-powered upscaling tech, which uh, you get on their 20 and 30 series desktop and laptop cards. And in supported games, it can boost your frame rate more than a new graphics card probably would, and has a minimal effect on the visuals, and it's also completely free. So in basic terms, DLSS, which is now up to version 2.1, renders the game at a lower resolution internally, and then uses the GPU's fast tensor cores and machine learning to upscale the resolution back up. And this is far more efficient than just rendering everything at the native res, so you get a massive boost to your frame rate, particularly at higher resolutions, and it's also a great way to offset the performance hit you get from enabling NVIDIA's fancy ray tracing effects. Now DLSS is already in some big games like Cyberpunk and Fortnite, although most exciting for me is that it's coming to Call of Duty Warzone soon. Now if you don't have a NVIDIA 20 or 30 series graphics card then you are a bit out of luck unfortunately, but I think aside from the raw performance, access to DLSS is the single biggest reason to upgrade your graphics card at the moment. It is magical stuff and it gives you a huge boost in performance and I can't wait to see how this even gets better over time and also see it supported in even more games. Okay, next up, and if you've built your PC or maybe you've reset the BIOS for any reason recently, there's a chance that your RAM may be running well under its rated speed and timings. It's happened to me a bunch of times. After a couple of crashes and an automatic BIOS reset, my 3000 MHz RAM was running much slower. So to fix this, I re-enabled the XMP memory profile, which is called the DOCP on Ryzen systems, in the BIOS. Not all motherboards have this option, although it's pretty standard on gaming models, and basically XMP sets your RAM frequency and timings to the fastest preset profile it should be stable at, and will also adjust the voltage automatically. If you don't have any XMP or DOCP setting, then some motherboards will allow you to manually adjust the speed and timings to what they should be, or even beyond that if you want a bigger overclock. I do also still think that 16 gigs of RAM is the sweet spot for gaming right now. If you are on 8, then you're fine, but I think you'll probably see a bit of an improvement in speed if you do upgrade to 16, and that can be one of the more affordable ways of upgrading your PC without some ridiculously overpriced graphics card or processor. However, if you are Mr. Fancy Pants with a shiny new RTX 3000 series graphics card, then, well, firstly, well done, because they are still very hard to find. But secondly, since the end of March, NVIDIA has basically unlocked the ability to turn on or enable the resizable bar, although you will need a compatible graphics card, motherboard, and processor. And this resizable bar is essentially a new PCIe technology that improves the memory management of your system, and it can boost your frame rate by anything up to 12% in some cases. So firstly, make sure you do have the latest NVIDIA game-ready drivers installed, and also the latest BIOS firmware for your motherboard. Now if you have an NVIDIA Founders Edition card, then it's actually a little bit easier, as you can just download their update tool, which I'll link below, and follow the instructions. It literally takes about 10 seconds. For third-party graphics cards, then firmware updates for each card can be downloaded from their manufacturer's websites, which again I'll leave links to below. Now as you guys know, one of the oldest tricks in the book for getting more performance from your system is overclocking. To be fair, this could be a whole video by itself, so this is more of a pointer than a guide. Overclocking really isn't that tricky. You can either just set an auto overclock in your motherboard's BIOS, nice and simple, or you can fine tune it, adjust voltages, and spend hours if not days just tweaking it. But either way, you can pretty easily get a meaningful boost to your frame rate. Beyond this, there are a few extra tweaks you can do to get even more performance. So you'll need to download an overclocking app. I'm using MSI Afterburner, but rather than overclocking, this is actually about unlocking your GPU power and voltage limits, and also changing the fan curve to allow your graphics card to maintain a higher clock speed for longer. So in Afterburner, firstly you'll want to head to the settings and unlock the voltage control and the monitoring. This opens up the voltage options, then restart Afterburner, then just increase the power limit to max. The maximum temp will also move as it's linked, but again, this is still a safe level. Next, go back to the settings, then head into the Fan tab, and enable user-defined fan control. 
And here we're going to use a more aggressive fan curve, i.e. the fans will ramp up quicker to keep things cooler at the expense of more noise. How noisy things get will depend on your GPU and your system, so play around with this until you're happy, but I'm going to make the fans ramp up faster at lower temperatures, which as I say should keep clock speeds running higher. Ok last tip, I promise we're almost there, and this is a nice and easy one, just a bit of housekeeping. You know the stuff, closing any apps you don't need when playing games, stuff like Chrome and even app launchers are often hardware accelerated, so they're using a little bit of your graphics card, and also downloading in the background can often affect your ping in online games. In the task manager, jump into the startup tab and disable everything you don't need at boot up. Make sure Windows is up to date, and also use a disk cleanup app to clear out loads of old Windows files, or use something like CC Cleaner or PC tune-up software to get rid of even more stuff like unused registry entries. And then when you are running a game, open task manager to make sure its priority is set to high. And that's it, those are my tips, and if you think I've missed any good ones, do let me know in the comments below, hopefully I haven't bored you to death completely, and if you do want to see more from me then don't forget to hit that subscribe button, ding that bell and all those annoying YouTube things. I'll also leave important links to everything I've talked about in the description below, including Nvidia's DLSS if you want to find out a little bit more about Nvidia's magical technology, and I'll see you guys next time right here on the Tech Chat. Cheers for watching!